the determination to follow God and the commandments for all ages. And the deacons, of course, because they are such a strong force. This, 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 this uh, I wouldn't say band, but it's a Come on. Amen. 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 The text is uh, it's a little, it's, I think it's a little difficult in a way, right? Um, but uh, I'll say that this woman, went to bow, has been on my heart for a few months, okay? Uh, and ever since I started re reading the Bible, and, uh, and, I, and I got to Genesis 38, and um, then, I, you know, right now, I'm, on, I'm in Hebrew. So you can see it now why she's been on the heart. The story about her. And so um, I'm going to ask you to go to the room and see the room with you, but I'll be in the room. About three months later, Judah was told Tamar, your daughter, in law, has played the heart. And moreover, she has been chattered by heart. And Judah said, Bring her out, let her be burned. As she was being brought out, she said, Word to her father in law, by the man to whom these belong, I am the child. And she said, Mark, I pray you, whose these are? The sin, the poor, and the staff. Then Judah acknowledged them and said, She is more righteous than I, inasmuch as I did not give her to my son Sheba. Sheba. And he did not buy the food again. When the time of the delivery came, there were twins in the room. And when she was in labor, one put out a hand, and the midwife took it and found on his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This be my brother's. But as he drew back his hand, behold, his brother came out, and she said, What a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore, his name was called Paradise. And I have tied this. Outside the law, the king son of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank God. To say, make the name of the Lord. First of all, let us, let us keep it. We take the kingdom, spread it, and grow it. Help us to share the gospel. And it's supposed to do it. That people know that the goodness of God. And may your will be done here on an earthly plane as it is in heaven. For us to be, as you choose, the first to fulfill your will, so that others may see all of the books and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Now I thank you that you are all together under this roof and under your eyes to look into your world. To the words of the mouth, the meditations of the mouth, be accepted in thy sight, O Lord. Thanks for the name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Chapter 38 is dropped in the middle, or dropped right in the beginning, so right, right at the beginning, of a story with which you are very familiar, the story of Joseph. See, it's funny that the Bible introduces Joseph's story in chapter 37 of Genesis. But it then takes this interview and goes on about Tamar. It's like a parenthesis. You need to know about this woman and what happened and what happened with Judah and all of that because it's very important. Okay? So, so, you see, because Joseph goes from the pit to 
Let me ask you, you recognize the God of the in this time, in this house, in this temple, or are you like people who don't see the need, see the blessing? Because the people who are staring at, worrying over, and talking about the wrong. Don't you know God's got this whole thing in him? He's going to work the work. He is. He's in charge of your situation. Just let him take charge of you. That's right. That's right. I'll take my, take my head two strikes in this time. So it was two strikes for her. Her and only her first two husbands. Came on across the heads of persons herself. Maybe even about herself. As to why these two men died while married to her. Again, there were certainly rules. You can be sure some other women of her to take on this. Because whatever she had going on, they didn't want any part of it. What happened to her? So how many strikes do you have on these two? She had two of these. There were two men in the camp. And you say, well, that's all right. That's okay. See, I know somebody who will every strike that is against you. He has declared that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that any tongue raised against you in judgment you shall condemn. And those tongues are like the nipping rock up there to nip at you. And then all you have to do is say, oh, and there you go. See, if you have strikes against you, my God can take those strikes up. If you know about so if you don't have any strikes, and put you on first base. And God will keep on working with you, and he'll get you around to second base. So and in about second, you're in school position. That's what you're called in baseball. School position, you look. Okay, so the are going to but he'll bring you right on around third. And finally, my God will bring you home. You know how to do that. You know how to do that. Thank you, home. Now, the third thing about Tamar, I'm almost saying that, but Tamar was falsely accused. Falsely accused. Oh, and how easy it was for Judah to pronounce judgment to proclaim burn. Behind that third was a kind of relief. See, Judah still had a fear for his youngest son, Shaddai. Sometimes a person is wrong, another sees an easy way out of his guilt by destroying the person who I'm going to say that sometimes a person who is wrong to another sees an easy way out of his guilt by destroying the person he hurt. Every time they see the injured party, they feel the pangs of guilt. If you remind him of his sin, then what does he do? This case and of course, not just individuals, but of course, group of people. One of the most difficult things I think for some people is that because African American people have been treated so wrong, they can see us and get angry about the fact that here we are reminded of what they have done to us. And as a result, you can see that anger expressed in a rage and you wonder which does it come to? Because we have been paid to save somebody else in the teams. Now Tamar's father in law took the evidence he could see in the world of conclusion judges and he took it too. Since Tamar was an unmarried widow, there could be only one conclusion. She was an Ellen Gary with somebody. But let's take a closer look at this. Tamar was supposed to be gay made a promise. She was made a promise by Judah that he would give that he would give her to his third son. After it became clear that this was not going to happen, she acted. Tamar was never a heart. Okay? She was never a heart. A heart that would be available to basically anyone from the Tamar waited only for Judah. And she required not a payment, but a promise. A promise to be kept. When Tamar took the signet, the cord, the step, she gave herself insurance against any fallout in the future. She pretended to be what she was not to get the promise she never got. 
came on and learned something about the blessing of God and wanted in on it. This woman was vindicated in the end when confronted, when confronted by her father-in-law with the evidence. And he was confronted with the evidence. And Judah himself confessed that Tamar was more righteous than he was. I'm not trying to tell you that what Tamar did was right. She was a desperate woman who made a bold move outside the accepted norms in our place in the ancestry of Christ. Tamar had twins. They were from the, the text. She had twins. And what's very interesting is but you know, scientists tell us about our genes, genetics, and DNA, and it turns it turns so much about us. Turns, you know, our hair color, eye color, and things like that. Because we can't really change or influence very much. However, there are some aspects of our genetics, some of our genes, that we can change or affect. They call the epigenetics. This genetics and epigen. Now, this woman has such a pressing desire, such a pressing nation, she pressed her way in order to have the son of the child that she was supposed to have, and she was rewarded by having two. Not this one. But what was interesting is that that nature that she had, I think, affected the genes, because it would affect your genes, and some of the things that you do, because you know when people act a certain way, you see them act a certain way in families a lot of times. And uh, if people would say, well, if you, if you uh, we have a gene that put on the world, you can see what's happening to that uh, But if you, if you back off the food, if you back off the food, get plenty of exercise, and eat a healthy diet, you can affect that and change it so that it does not affect you as much. So that you can be slim anyway. All right? I think that the genes, that uh, this gene change that she passed on to her son, she passed on to the separate son who came out first, favorites. Because if you remember in the reading, what happens to the first son, the youngest, the youngest, his name came out first. And the nurse put a red cord around his name. That's what came out first, she said. But he didn't come out first because the brother broke the rules. And he said came out. He came out first. And so I believe that some of that press, some of that desire to press on that ability to press on, to move forward, she passed to great this. His name is the one that occurs in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you may be waiting for funds to be fulfilled. Maybe they told you that if you were a team player and go to next your house, you'd be in line for the ocean. Then you found out that you were in line behind some folks who didn't even put in a full day's work. It never happened to you. So many people are subjected to broken promises. Either the promiser had no power to, 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 to let in your attention, excuse me, to fulfill the promise. That's what happened to Tamar. She would have no intention to fulfill his promise to her. You may be subject to the same types of trickery, scams, stolen, and other people in the middle of as that. But that's okay because my God works around obstacles. He, he works through circumstances. He takes you over the road. So all is a promise keep. They're so good that he can make promise breakers keep their promises despite themselves or he fulfills their promises himself. I don't know what promise you're waiting to have for you. Maybe you're waiting for more pay. Maybe you're waiting for somebody to move away. Maybe you're looking to get a house. You could be looking to get a spouse. Maybe you're trying to make your way in when there's no way. But whatever promise it is, you need to understand something about the way God operates. You see, God is not just a promise. Let me tell you, it's like a word. You want something that somebody promised you that you're going to get it over here. Now, the thing is, sometimes people work a promise. That means that the money that gets you a call, it won't, you can't get it. All the work of God is not just a rich picture. See, my God 
he's a bridge builder. He takes the scraps of the broken cars. He doesn't use those he takes those. Those are only as good as the person who made them in the first That means it's no good. He throws it away. He gives a, a, a bridge for you that cannot be broken. He's the bridge you can sit down on.
Et qu'il y a un peu de temps. Et qu'il y a un peu de temps. Et qu'il y a un peu de temps.